and because his evidence would convict the suspect and witness would be the means of the murderer being hanged, which he did not wish to be left on his mind. I see there's a second note in the margin here. And my grandfather's written in the margin, and after this identification, which the suspect knew, no other murder of this kind took place in London. That's very dramatic stuff, isn't it? It is, yes, it is. Thank you, Jim. The notes in this book are startling. They confirm what Anderson claimed, that police showed a man they believed to be the Ripper to a witness. That witness confirmed they had caught their man, but he refused to testify against him. And the reason for this refusal? Chief Inspector Swanson says the witness did not want to testify against a fellow Jew. But this book has one more secret to reveal. On the end paper, Swanson writes, and I quote, Continuing from page 138, after the suspect had been identified at the seaside home, where he had been sent by us with difficulty in order to subject him to identification, and he knew he was identified. On suspect's return to his brother's house in Whitechapel, he was watched by police, city CID, by day and night. In a very short time, the suspect, with his hands tied behind his back, he was sent to Stepney Workhouse and then to Colney Hatch and died shortly afterwards. Kosminski was the suspect, and like the other notes, it's initialed DSS. So Kosminski was Anderson's suspect, not John Pizer. Have we found Jack the Ripper?
Welcome back. This letter from Home Office handwriting expert Dr. Dick Trotty confirms that those pencil notes in the margin of Anderson's book were genuinely made by Donald Swanson. Dr. Trotty compared them with other samples of the Chief Inspector's handwriting that we've given him. The evidence does seem to be pointing to Kosminski. We've got three senior officers of the period, Anderson with his book, McNaughton with his memo, and now Swanson with the marginalia, all seemingly implicating the same man. The next step is to test what these three men are telling us. Who was Kosminski? What can we find out about him? What brought him to the police's attention? Well, Swanson told us he was sent to Colney Hatch Mental Asylum. If he's right, there must be a reference to Kosminski in the asylum records. I'm at the Greater London Archives. And this is the Colney Hatch Asylum Admissions Register from November 1888 to December 1906. As we look through the index, we can actually find our man. And here he is, Aaron Kosminski. Swanson was right. I'm with the crime historian Martin Fido. Martin, you first discovered Kosminski's entry in this register. Can you tell us what it says? Yes. It says here, Aaron Kosminski, date of admission 7th of February 1891, age 26, occupation hairdresser, civil state, single, religion, Hebrew, education, can read and write. Time of insanity, six years. Cause of mental condition, self-abuse. Form of disorder, mania. Symptoms, incoherence. Bodily state, fair. And he is discharged on April the 19th, 1894. What does it tell us about his mental state? Nothing. For that, we need this book, which is the day book of Coney Hatch Asylum with his full medical notes. Now, the doctor who committed him, Dr. Huchin, writes, he declares that he is guided and his movements altogether controlled by an instinct that informs his mind. He says he knows the movements of all mankind, 